Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I put a piece of gum in my mouth at the wrong time. Um, super thankful. Uh, welcome to the most excellent way uh, Monday night. Uh, we are currently obviously doing this uh, Facebook Live, but we are at Salem Heights Church um, here in Salem. And we're just thankful to do this. My wife and I have not done a live. It's been a long time. Months. Yeah, we've been serving in person across the way here at the church. So, And if you guys ever have an opportunity and you live here locally or you're traveling through the area on a Monday night uh, between 7 and 8.30, we'd love to see you stop by, join us. Um, we're going to start. I'm going to actually ask if my wife will open us up in a word of prayer before we get started this evening. I'd love to. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this evening. Uh, I just want to praise you, God, that we can um, gather and, and worship you, Lord, freely. Thank you for the church building that we can come to. Thank you for Facebook Live, the ability, the technology to just um, share about you, um, share promises from your word, uh, share the gospel that, that we can truly be set free from addiction by faith in your uh, son's perfect life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Lord, um, that because of, because of Jesus Christ, we can be set free from everything that um, we find ourselves addicted to. So, Lord, I just want to praise you for that. I just pray for the men and women that are going to be showing up tonight here on Facebook Live, as well as watching at a later time. Lord, I just pray that if anybody does not know you, has never said yes to the free gift of salvation, that tonight would be the night that they, they do. Or, or even if they have questions, Lord, that you would give them the courage to private message us later um, and ask more about what it means to be set free, um, which is only found in your son, Jesus Christ. So Lord, I just pray that this um, time would be honoring to you, Lord. I pray that you would just keep any distractions for my husband, myself, and others coming online. Um, just keep the distractions away, Lord, so that we can just truly focus on hearing your voice and having our hearts changed from the inside out through your Holy Word and your Holy Spirit. Uh, we're just so thankful. In Jesus' name uh, we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we get into this evening, again, this is the most excellent way. The most excellent way started in 1986 in San Diego, California by Glenn and Judy. Um, they both struggled with addiction, uh, found themselves trying to get clean and sober and um, doing so, they you know, found Christ and uh, started looking to God's word and what it's gonna look like to follow Christ and find um, their answers through, through the scriptures. And they wrote, they wrote this, um, it says, the most excellent way is love, according to 1 Corinthians 12, three and 13, three through eight. The most excellent way is a loving group of men and women affected directly or indirectly by drugs, alcohol, or other life dominating sin. We utilize biblical principles to overcome the guilt, frustration, hopelessness, fear, and shame associated with addictive behavior, remembering the, the admonition of the scriptures. Beware lest anyone take you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians 2 8. We believe a person can become totally free from addiction and compulsive behavior only by the power of the indwelling of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The most excellent way is to be reconciled to God, the Father, through belief in Jesus Christ. We believe that through meetings such as this, we will grow in our faith in Christ. We will become healthy, joy-filled, and productive children of God with the support of others who understand what we have lived through and by applying biblical principles to our lives. We gain a better understanding of sin nature and how to change our attitudes and behavior. The most excellent way is a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys start to notice a theme right here, but it's all about Jesus. Uh, a life in him gives us freedom. Um, only in scripture do we find uh, freedom. Uh, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, God continues to set the captive free. There is nowhere in Scripture that God leaves His His people trapped in bondage, and so that's that's one of the benefits of the most excellent way and in getting into God's Word is to learn about a freedom, this newness of life that we have according to Scripture, not according to what I'm going to tell you, not according to what my wife may say, you know, Matt Masera and his wife, Warren, 
whoever gets on here, it's not according to anything that we're going to come up with, but it's according to what the Word of God says. And it's through those promises that we stand and, and can walk in, in freedom. And so, um, you know, when you show up here in person, we talk about there, there's four reasons why we say this is a safe group. We want people that show up to, to understand and know that they're in a safe place. Um, and in that, um, the four reasons, I, I will tell you two of them. The most important reason is that we're always going to get into the Word of God. Uh, again, it's not going to be man's opinion. It's not going to be uh, anything outside of that. We want to get people into uh, the Word of God. Uh, the other reason is that as we all get it, like people that are showing up or people that are on staff, uh, whether they're, you know, family and friends or, you know, the addiction side of, of things, like all of us that are here to serve, we all get it. Um, as a staff, we've all made a commitment to not talk about uh, what's said here. Um, you know, the third reason is that what is said here stays here. And so as a staff, we've committed to not talk about other people's uh, stuff. You know, and I tell the guys all the time, uh, you know, when I show up here, even as a staff member, I want to be able to have that conversation when I'm asking for, you know, whether it be prayer for a kid or, you know, whatever is going on in those in those things. I want to know that that there's confidence. And, and I know that the individuals that are showing up here uh, want that as well. And there's a fourth reason. Yeah. So I love all of those reasons of why it's a safe place and my life before Christ, my life um, trapped in addiction, I put myself in and found myself in many unsafe situations. So I never get tired every Monday night of working through why most excellent way is a safe place, even for myself. And so then the fourth reason of why it's a safe place is that uh, people are praying. Hundreds, if not thousands people are pray of people are praying for most excellent way. We've got most excellent ways all over the country. We have most excellent ways in other countries and um, we're getting texts and emails even from the Philippines or Costa Rica, um, wherever, India, of other um, folks that are praying that for what? For most excellent way to not be um, thriving for most excellent way's sake, but that the, the, the Lord be glorified, that people would come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and that they would be set free and find freedom and then walk in that newness of life that's found only in and through Jesus Christ. And so... Um, the prayer of the righteous, as God's word says, availeth much. It does a lot of good stuff. And so we are being prayed for so we can know that that's, that makes us a safe place. Also, in regards to always going to the word of God, my opinion is going to change depending on what kind of day I've had, um, depending on what I've experienced in my life and whatever you're presenting me with, with your issues, my opinion is going to change from one day to the next, even from maybe one minute to the next. But God is constant. There's no variation or shifting shadow with him. So his word is always going to be what it is. And so just knowing that it's a safe place, um, you know, because it is, we're always going to go to the word of God. Yes. And so as we work through, you know, why this is a safe place, um, we then would jump into uh, the 10 attitudes of victorious living. Um, so this is not a 12 step program. This is a one step program and that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in that the 10 attitudes of victorious living is found and it's only possible these attitudes this way of living is only possible through a spirit spirit led life you know part of the thing in the opening statement um that we read talks about the indwelling of the holy spirit remembering um we believe a person can be totally free from addiction and compulsive behavior only by the power of the indwelling spirit of christ jesus so for those of us that you know as my wife even prayed that if somebody doesn't know jesus that today be the day and if you do know Jesus there is a promise that that Christ himself gives to the disciples when he tells them that he must go away that he must go through what he's going to go through so that he can go to heaven and sit at the right hand of the father but he promises the helper the Holy Spirit so that the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead when we say yes to the free gift of salvation lives within us mm -hmm. that's the power that we can rely on that's the promise that we can rely on that we can be overcomers, that we can walk in freedom. You don't have to keep showing up to the most excellent way time and time and time again in order to continue that walk. What you need to do is show up to the Word of God in the, in the time of need, in the time of joy, in the time of whatever time. Show up to Christ and show up to His Word. That's where the answer is found. And so I, I love that as 
as you look at the 10 attitudes of victorious living it, it is a spirit-filled life it is the holy spirit in us that gives us the power to be humble to have repentance to to be spirit-led it is it's a spirit-led life right so we're not going to pull off these attitudes without that so know this as we get into the 10 attitudes of victorious living these are not possible if you do not know jesus so the 10 attitudes of, of victorious living let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus which is philippians 2 5 so we're looking for that mindset change right so that we look to him not to the dope man we look to him not to the dope we look to him rather than finding you know uh, fulfillment in whatever you know brings us temporary joy but to have that mindset change that we see things the way that Christ did. Then the first attitude is humility. And it says, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Number two is repentance. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Number three is submissive. Jesus said, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. Number four is honesty. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled, Matthew 5, 6. I honestly examine myself in the light of God's word. Number five, merciful. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy, Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. So obedient is number six. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. Reconciliation is seven. In Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. I ask forgiveness from all those that I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. Faith is number eight. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's in Matthew 5, 10. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when, not if, when I face hardship and trials. Perseverance is number nine. In Matthew 5, 11 through 12, Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. And then we um, finish up here with number 10, loving servant. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. And something I just love about these 10 attitudes of victorious living is, and I say this often to the ladies when I'm um, across the way teaching or leading, um, these are spirit-led behaviors, um, as my husband had mentioned. And it's not that, um, okay, so I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got God. I, I'm with God right now. And he's going to work me through humility. And, oh, we've mastered humility. And it's God. We've done it together. And now I'm going to move on to repentance. Um, and, oh, okay, we've got repentance. And now I'm going to, it's not a matter of working through these, you know, one through ten. These are spirit-led. So they're all working together. They can all, like, be produced in and through us um, at all times as we allow. And starting with that thinking like Christ and not Carly. Um, so letting that, that mind be in you, to, which is also in Christ Jesus. I need to think like Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit that's indwelling in me because I've placed my faith in Jesus Christ. Allow all these things to be possible all at once, um, which is so encouraging to me versus me trying to figure this out, even with God's help, one by one by one. Yes. So, uh, you know, again... It's the 10 attitudes of victorious living. And so then we would turn over to the back of the card. Um, Matthew 6, 33, and this is a promise, folks, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is that that component of us keeping our eyes focused on him. You know, as, as Peter, as Jesus was coming to them and Peter saw, and he came out of the boat and he was walking, 
He was able to walk on water because his eyes were fixated on Jesus. But the minute that he took his eyes off of Christ, he started to sink. And that's the same way for us in life today is that when we have our eyes focused on him, it's not that, that, that there's not trials. It's right. not that there's not things going on in the world around us. But God takes care of it. And it's, and it's clearly stated in this. But it's when our eyes, when we have you know, trials with kids, work, whatever it may be in this world today, who knows what, it, what, the, what the problem or the trial may look like. But what I do know is that according to scripture, if we are fixated here, Christ takes care of this. Right. He's gonna see us through those trials and circumstances. And it's when we take our eyes off of him and try to fixate on the things that are going on around us that we start to sink, just like Peter did, right? As he's, as he's walking out to Jesus and he's fixated on Christ, he's walking on water. But as soon as he takes his eyes off the Lord, he starts to sink. And that's the same thing with life. As soon as we take our eyes off the Lord, boom, you start to sink. Things become overwhelming and, and frustration and, and all of and, and, yeah, and chaos and all of these things. And it's again, when we take and we put our eyes fixated back on him, does he see us through? Folks, I, I ended up at the most excellent way because of fixating on, on life and me. Uh, fixated on Jesus, my life is absolutely astronomically uh, different and way better. But as soon as soon as I start to think, okay, I got this, I can figure this out, things become overwhelming and chaotic every time. Our best bet is to just keep our eyes fixated on the Lord. When trials and things come, fixate on Him. Take them to Him, trust in Him, walk in Him, and see what He's going to do. The next component, and, and I'm going to have my uh, amazing wife read uh, Titus 3, 3 through 8. Yeah, real quick before that on the card uh, or on the pamphlet above that, we've got a couple of scriptures, which um, one of them is what my husband was alluding to with that opening statement for most excellent way. First um, Corinthians 12, 31, it says, and now I will show you the most excellent way, love. And I love that. I love love. <laughs> I love that it's not the way the world defines love. It's not the way that I define love. It's the way the Lord defines love. And love was shown to us through Jesus Christ's, you know, life, uh, his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection. That, you know, God um, sent his only son to die for the sins of the whole world so that we could be made right with him. That's the love that we're talking about here. The love that is unfathomable. I probably said that word wrong. And um, it, I can't wrap my mind around that love, yet it's there for all of us. Um, and then also Matthew 6, 33, that says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And I think about, even as my husband was saying, you know, fixate on him, this is gonna get taken care of. It might be chaotic right now down here, look to him, he's gonna take care of all of this. And that's what that Matthew 6, 33 speaks to for me. It's seek God, and I thought I had to get all this figured out and then I was gonna be good enough to come to the Lord. And that's not what he's saying. He's saying, come to me, Carly, insert your name, whoever you are, and I will take care of the mess. I want you as you are. And so that's so encouraging to me. Um, so Titus 3, three through, eight, three through eight says, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, he saved us. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration, new birth, and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So there's an encouragement that we have for folks if they show up on a Monday night or a Tuesday night in West Salem. And, and I always say to the ladies, not if, but when you memorize this Titus 3 through through 8 and can come here and recite it to us. It doesn't have to be word perfect, but pretty darn close. Um, we do have a $25 gift certificate to the Best Little Roadhouse. So in that, if you're local and want to come and when, not if, but when you memorize this scripture and can come here on a Monday or go to West Salem Baptist on a Tuesday, same, uh, same time on Tuesday, 7 to 8.30, 
um, and can recite that Titus passage, pull one of us leaders aside and, we, and recite it to us, we will have that gift certificate for you. Um, and yes, there is a tangible reward. Like there's a, you can put that gift certificate in your hand, go to the best little roadhouse on commercial, $25 gets you a good meal. Uh, honey butter rolls are endless if you like those things. Um, and, and, but that's not the intent. Really the eternal reward is hiding God's scripture in your heart, memorizing his word, clinging to his promises. And when you are faced with stinking thinking, when you're faced with trials, you have that scripture, the sword of the spirit, the offensive, only offensive weapon that we have against those things um, to, to claim truth. Remind, being standing in the promises of the word of the Lord versus you know our own finite thinking. So I want to encourage you to take some time. And again, one more time, not if, but when you memorize that and can make it down here to one of our most excellent lay groups um, and recite that we have that reward for you. And they've got good food at Best Little Roadhouse. Thank you. Yeah, they got good food. So another thing with the Titus passage, sorry, you were... Um, okay. Another thing that we do is we always want to just slow it down and, um, you know, ask the folks that we're meeting with, you know, what do you see in the text there in that Titus passage? We always say 30 seconds or less um, in those settings because we want to have, you know, plenty of time to really get into the Word of God. Um, but I'm going to ask my husband, you know, when I read that Titus passage, what is it that stood out to you this week? The, for we ourselves were also once foolish. Uh, you know, it's just a great reminder that no matter where you're at in, in this walk, um, to not forget where you come from. Yeah. Um, that just because you you know have grabbed a hold of the things of God and God is transforming and changing your life, um, I don't ever want to forget that you know that I was once those things because it keeps me in a constant state of thanksgiving uh, to the Lord of what He rescued and saved me from. Was that thirty seconds? That was pretty good. I awesome. Don't know. Sounded good. What about you? Yeah, I. it's funny. We've been doing this for about 10 years now, and um, I see something different every single Monday night, and I've yet to get tired of um, getting into God's Word, but then also going over this Titus passage. Um, and I, what I see tonight is towards the end there where it says, this is a faithful saying. So what? Everything that was above, ahead of that. Um, and these things I want you to affirm constantly. So the Word of God is telling me to remind myself affirm constantly what it is that's in this scripture why because i'm gonna forget right like i'm i could walk out of here and something could happen and i could forget all this truth that i just you know read to everybody and so i i appreciate that reminder um you know i need to be in god's word and not as a check the box off the list but i need to be in god's word to remind myself of what he's saying to me of the promises that he has um, laid out for me, the work that he's done, that past tense Carly was hateful and hating one another and hateful towards herself mostly, um, but that Christ did show up, he did save me, and that I have hope for a future. It says in here, uh, eternal life. I'm an heir, I'm part of the family. I need to be reminded of these things, not only to myself by being in the word, but I need to have a community of folks around me who are gonna do what? Point me back towards these truths that I need to affirm constantly. So that's what I see tonight. So then after this component, we would introduce ourselves. And so oh, yeah. uh, my name's Josh and uh, I originally came. I had just gotten out of the penitentiary in 2012, uh, showed up for a men's breakfast. Uh, Pastor Matt then let me know that they were starting this group and he invited me to come. And I did because I needed Jesus. Uh, I still need Jesus today. Uh, I knew though that when I got out of prison that if I wanted to continue to um, live in freedom, uh, both from addiction and like actual freedom, like no longer behind, uh, you know, 25 foot walls uh, with barbed wire and razor wire, um, that I needed to follow Christ completely. And so showing up to the most excellent way continued to encourage me to get into God's word. It gave me a safe place uh, to talk to other men about, you know, different things that were going on in my life. Um, and, you know, none of that has changed over the 10 years that we've been doing this. Um, I still need Jesus just as much today as I did then. I still need to get into God's word so that I can continue to live in a freedom that is found in and only through Christ. Yep. And it keeps me free from uh, behind those big, huge walls. Um, 
and I show up because I, I love serving. I love coming alongside other men, pointing them towards Christ, and getting into God's Word uh, inductively with, with others. Um, so then it's my turn. My name's Carly, and i uh, married to this guy. And um, I'm here because the Lord, the Lord set me free from years of addiction. And I've, you know, part of my story, and we want to have plenty of time to get into the Word tonight, so I'll be really quick with this. Um, but part of my story was, you know, experiencing... Um, sobriety through other means and methods and systems and programs and um, you know even at right around seven years clean and sober the third time around um, I didn't know the Lord I knew a God of my own understanding and please know that that's not me knocking any other system um, I'm ex you know sharing my story in it um, but I had a God of my my own understanding a God that I created so um, I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know Jesus Christ. I didn't have a transformed heart. So even at that many, I mean, to me, seven years seemed like a lot of time to be clean and sober. Um, I had so much guilt and shame and anger and, um, you know, just a lot of stuff that wasn't great. And so um, when I came to know the Lord, it was a, a mighty way. And um, he set me free. Um, we're going to be coming up on 10 years on August 2nd of knowing Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and, you know, coming up August 2nd, 10 years of never drinking, using, gambling, any of that. Um, and so I'm here um, because the Lord faithfully allowed me to try everything else to try to be made well and nothing worked until I came to encounter Christ. And so um, I keep showing up because I want other women to come to know Jesus Christ and to walk in that newness of life um, and it's a it's a sincere passion of mine so that's why I'm here so uh, we would love to know you guys we would love I mean all this is uh, you know not really very personable but uh, if you want to type in the comments who you are um, what brought you to the most excellent way mm -hmm. uh, that would be great if or you, even later if you watch it later yeah and if you don't want to hey we, we understand as well Right. Um, then the next component of this is to celebrate. Um, hey, Rhonda, thank you for participating. Um, the next component of this is, is to do some celebration. Um, you know, we celebrate time. Uh, why do we celebrate time? Because it's, it's what God has done and is doing in and through us, right? So my wife just talked about getting ready to celebrate, you know, 10 years. Uh, in January, it'll be 12 for me. And... Um, I'm thankful every day to the Lord yeah. and I give him thanks for it because it's not by me mustering up anything that it's that either one of us have gotten the amount of time that we have. It's because we, we give all credit to the Lord. And so it's not, you know, because of anything that we do or this piece of plastic that you would get if you showed up here, it's about the Lord. And if this was your first time, if this is your first time, uh, even participating by watching the most excellent way, we would love to know that too. Yep. Um, but if you were to show up on a Monday or Tuesday, uh, if you were to show up at any most excellent way in the United States or around the world for your first time, you would get one of these little black tokens that says uh, the most excellent way, 1 Corinthians. Uh, Probably 1231. Uh, yes. See, she's smart. Uh, and on the back it says, welcome, we love because Christ first loved us. And that's the absolute truth. Any bit of love that's coming out of me is because of the love that God uh, showed me and has instilled in me. And so we just give these to say, hey, we're, we're thankful that you're here. Uh, God loves you. And uh, to encourage somebody to keep coming back. And then we would celebrate time. Um, every moment, every second, every breath that we get is a true blessing to be thankful for from the Lord. Yes. Um, and as we look at time, um, you know, we ask, you know, if anybody's celebrating 30 days of victory. Uh, and if you do and are, um, we want to celebrate you. And you'd get one of these little white yep. ones. Uh, and then we go on to 60 days. Four years. Congratulations, Rhonda. It's amazing, yeah. sister. If you don't, well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then we would go with 60 days with one of these little green ones, uh, 90 days with one of the red ones, uh, six months with one of these blue ones, nine months with one of these That's orange, orange ones. Come on. It's the color That's orange. orange. It matches my beard. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, and then one year. If anybody's celebrating one year, you get one of these yellow ones. And then as Rhonda just shared with everybody that she just celebrated four years, uh, we customize these bad boys. Uh, we have black highlighters. No, Sharpies. Sharpies highlighters. 
See, she's smart. Uh, and we will put, you know, times, whatever. One of a kind. There'll be no other like it. I have one in my backpack over here from last year that says uh, times 11. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I will hopefully get one. Becky Stevens, awesome, six Becky. years. That's awesome, amazing. thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, welcome, thank you for joining us, my brother Matthew. Uh, yeah, so it's time, right? And so uh, right after we do this, I always tell the guys when I'm leading, uh, this is the time of the night that I personally think that we should, as staff, have to really shut things down and uh, ask people to, to quiet down as so we can get into the Word of God because we ask in 30 seconds or less, tell us some things that you're thankful for. Um, I know I'm super thankful for every opportunity that I get to serve the Lord. Uh, and I'm even more thankful when I get an opportunity to serve the Lord with my wife um, because I'm, I just know where we come from mm -hmm. and how much of an answer to prayer that our marriage is. Yeah. Um, and so I'm super thankful for these moments. Yeah, and you know, I'm thankful. Oh, there's so many things to be thankful for always. And um, I was just sharing with a sister of mine um, during our staff time before we started tonight. I was telling her like, I really love this new song or it's been out for a little while. I, I, don't, I don't know who, I think it's Michael Holcomb and it's, um, it's like a worship song and it's like, thanks for the, you know, blue sky or whatever. I don't know. Thanks for the sunrise. Thanks for the night sky. Um, not much of a singer, but it is just a song of worship. And I, I was like telling her how much I re am really liking that song right now. And I started crying. I'm like, I don't, why am I, I don't know why I'm crying. Like I'm not sad, you know? And it just sparked a conversation about um, being tender and having a tender heart and being able to experience and feel the feelings that the Lord has chosen for us human people to have, right? And, um, you know, my life outside of Christ, my life trapped in addiction. And, you know, folks, addiction wasn't just drugs and alcohol or gambling or shopping or destructive. It was all, it was anything, like anything that I could seek after to try to fill myself up with. And um, that life was full of, like, no feelings, you know, really being just really numb and um, just uh, not experiencing choosing to not feel any of the feels and um, other than like the only thing I would have which isn't a feeling but like you know the only thing you'd get out of me other than nothing was like sarcasm and some of y'all probably know this but I just learned that like the Greek of sarcasm means to tear flesh <laughs> you know so I was either dead right in my emotions or tearing flesh my own flesh and others with my sarcasm and so uh, I'm just thankful, long-winded way, probably more than 30 seconds of saying, I'm just so thankful that today I have got a soft heart, that the Lord truly did replace my heart of stone and gave me a soft, um, pliable, uh, tender heart that feels today. And I'm just so thankful. It's okay. It's just you and I. They can't really talk. So uh, we get to go as long as we want on thankfulness. <laughs> and again, like I said, like this really should be the point. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, because having an attitude of thankfulness. So mm -hmm. Pastor Matt, back in the beginning of all of this, he used to challenge us uh, back when there was just like five or six of us. And sometimes the staff outweighed the amount of people right. that were showing up. Uh, we know because we were sometimes just those people that were here. And he used to challenge us with uh, to make a list. If you know, go home, grab a piece of paper and a pen and start writing. Write a list of 70 things that you're thankful for, right? Because having an attitude of thankfulness really changes things. When you're starting to feel you know, down and gloomy or, you know, that stinking thinking or whatever. Like if you start thinking about the things and thanking the Lord for the things that you're thankful for, like it starts to change things. Right. And, uh, I really appreciate that. And, and it really helps, uh, today because of the fact that we take so much for granted right. and getting right back down to the roots of, of life and the things that we have to be thankful for, like the breath in our lungs. Uh, the fact that I have sight, um, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that I have a marriage that is God first, you know, that it is God centered, which makes our marriage great. Even in the midst of, I know you guys are going to be surprised that sometimes we don't necessarily get along. Shocker. I know it's okay. I'll give you a second to take a deep breath <laughs> as you take that one in. Okay. But knowing that we have the Lord, right, in, in the midst of that. And to just really get down to thankfulness, it really does change things, you know? And, 
as Anna, you know, one year, three months, glory to God Amen. is right. right. Jerry, being thankful, just being able to get into God's word tonight, absolutely. Thankful, Bart, thankful for the awareness of his presence and seeing God in others. Amen. Never had that before, right? To start to see like Philippians 2, 5, right? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's one of my big prayers almost on a daily basis is Lord, let me see others the way that you see them, yeah. right? Because that changes everything, everything. You know, we love because first Christ first loved us, the little black welcome tokens. I'm not joking, folks, when I say that that's absolutely true because I was not a loving person. I didn't love myself let alone anybody else. And to have that, to be thankful, man, thankfulness just, see, I can keep going on and on around thankfulness, but I won't. What we're doing when we're doing that, so please don't wait for Monday night if you're here in person or if you're showing up online, don't wait for Monday night to start working. I mean, if that's the only time you work through what you're thankful for, well, praise the Lord for that. But be in the practice of continually, like, what am I thankful for? Um, and what it's doing, it's worshiping the Lord. Like, we are like worshiping him through these tokens of people showing up and celebrating milestones of victory and we're worshiping him for the good things the book of james lay, lays out really clearly that every not some every good and perfect thing comes down from the father above and so in that whatever we're thankful for we're saying these are good things well the word of god says that any every good thing comes from him so we are thanking him him worshiping him for his good gifts and it absolutely changes the trajectory of our thinking when we are stuck in that. Like, I love how Pastor Matt always says, y'all are probably fine. It might just be me. Get mm -hmm. stuck in that stinking thinking. I am I am in my flesh bent towards what's not working, what's not good, how things aren't measuring up to my expectations probably. Um, but when I'm instead... What am I thankful for? And really, truly putting that to the test. I, I encourage you to put that to the test when you are realizing, wow, I'm like not happy right now. All I can see is nothing but struggle. Um, get out that list of things that you're thankful for. Working through, oh yes, and praising the Lord for those things that he's done. And it absolutely will change. You're no longer focused on this. You're back here, like my husband had said earlier, you're focused on him. Yep. So now, as we're uh, getting ready to run out of time, we're going to get into uh, yeah. God's word. So tonight's attitude of victorious living is repentance. And it says, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Folks, it says, then call, choose, commit, and change. If God is calling you and you choose to commit your ways to him, he will change you, guaranteed. Yeah. And then faith in God's promises produces power, right? So if we believe in Jesus Christ and we stand on his promises, it gives us the power to walk in victory over whatever. So tonight we're going to get into uh, John uh, chapter 5, verses 2 through 18. Uh, I'm going to read the couple first couple of verses and then we're going to pause for a second and then we'll move forward. And it starts off with this in John chapter 5, starting in verse 2. In Jerusalem... There is a pool with five covered porches. In Aramaic, it is called Bethesda. This pool is near the Sheep Gate. Many sick people were lying on porches beside the pool. Some of them were blind, some were crippled, and some were paralyzed. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been sick for a very long time. So he asked him, do you want to be made well? We're going to stop right there. What are, what are some things that are standing out to you, babe? And, oh, yeah. And I, I love verse 6. And so at the beginning of the evening, um, we did have somebody post a link to the card, I believe. And so you can look at this or you can look in your Bible, um, in your Bible app. If you need a Bible, you can let us know. We can get you a Bible. Those are free. Um, we want to get you in the Word, whatever that looks like. But I love in verse 6 where it says, Jesus saw him, who? The guy that had been sitting there for 38 years in this really tough condition and, like, couldn't move. Um, Jesus saw him. And then it says, lying there and knew, you know, knew that he had been sick for a very long time. For me, that hits my heart pretty deeply because I re just remember believing that I was unseen. Like, nobody saw me, and I was unknown. Um, and it's encouraging to my heart that Jesus sees us and he knows our condition, yet he still wants to single us out and he wants to engage. He wants to interact with us. He wants to meet us where we're at in our broken, 
paralyzed, sick, addicted, incarcerated, homeless, without our kids, with whatever that looks like for each one of us, he sees us, he knows what we've been doing, he knows our condition, he knows the state of our hearts, yet he still wants to single us out and interact with us. And so I'm so encouraged by that. Yeah, so uh, I, I have like I have highlighted exactly what my wife um, said uh, on there. Um, one of the things, and, and we're going to move on to this next component, is, is this question, right? So mm-hmm. not only does Jesus see him um, there, and, and he knows because although Jesus Christ is, is man, he is also fully God. So mm-hmm. he, he's completely aware, and he knows this man's condition and how long he's been there. And, and he asks him, do you want to be made well? Folks, here's what's really cool is God is currently right now, just like he did 2,000 years ago in this very, very predicament of a story that we're reading. God is doing the same thing today. I don't know what it is that you're struggling with, what it is that you're going through. If you're watching this and you're still in the midst of, of your stuff, God is still continuing today asking this same very question, very question. Do you want to be made well? Okay, we'll move on. There's this little component uh, here. It says, Jesus showed up on a very difficult scene. He knew each person. He walked up to one individual knowing he had been, he had been there for 38 years. So Jesus asked a question in the Bible. God often asks a question before revealing the truth. No matter what your situation is, if you want to change, you, you need to trust God's word. Let's see how this person responds. So beginning in verse 7, the sick man answered, Sir, there is no one to help me get into the water when it starts moving. I try to be the first one into the water, but when I try, someone else always goes, goes in before I can. Then Jesus said, Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Immediately the man was well. He picked up his mat and he started walking. The day all this happened was a Sabbath day. So some Jews said to the man who had been healed, Today is the Sabbath. It is against our law for you to carry your mat on the Sabbath day. But he answered, The man who made me well told me, Pick up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who told you to pick up your mat and walk? But the man who had been healed did not know who it was. There were many people there and Jesus had left. Later Jesus found the man at the temple and said to him, See, you are well now, but stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So folks, it's, it's the answer to the question uh, at the end of verse 6. So he asked him, do you want to be made well? And again, like I said, Christ is still ans- asking that question. Mm. And some of the things, right, so we see this, right, so uh, I'm celebra- getting ready to celebrate 12 years uh, clean and sober, freedom from uh, addiction. My wife's talking about 10 years, right? So I think back to um, the beginning, right? And if somebody was to ask me, I would have been like, dude, like I, I've been strung out on dope for 20 years. Do I want to be made well? Like, duh, this isn't fun. This isn't cool. Prison sucks. Uh, life sucks. All these things, right? I would have, and then I would have had all these excuses, right? Like, well, I can't. I, I'm a felon. I can't really like move forward with my life. Like, I have all of these things, right? And, and we do that often as human beings because it because we're human. Uh, but we all are presented with the same thing. Christ gives a directive, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And immediately the man was made well. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's still the same thing today. Christ wants to continue to set us free from whatever it is that we've got going on. And he says still today for us to trust him, for us to put our eyes on him and watch what he's gonna do. The same as he told this man, And we all are being told the same thing today. And we all have the same opportunity that this man had. He could have done like he just did in seven. Start to come up with excuses and try to explain, but what about this and what about that? But instead, he chose to listen to Christ. He picked up his mat and was made well. The man was made well. And what does he do? He immediately does what Christ has said. And he heads to the temple and he has people start to say, Whoa, 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 what what are you you doing? 
right? Just like when we get clean and sober, right? And and we start to live life and we're like gonna go look for a job and actually show up to our parole appointments and do all of these things that, you know, typically we, we don't do. And our PO's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what, are, what are you doing here? Like, what do you mean you're gonna show up, right? Why? Well, the one thing that we have going for us, the one thing I have going for me, the one thing that my wife has is I know why. And I tell people, just like this guy did, this man named Jesus, right? That's how. And I get to do that today. Yeah, I just love that, you know, um, I don't see a lot of new things outside of what my husband said, but I, what I see is, you know, how there was a seemingly hopeless, hopeless situation that only Christ could be the answer to, so only Christ could make him well. Um, and it is that, it's that element of there's a choice to do. So the healing's there for us. Do we, will we choose to listen to God's voice? Will we choose to say yes to the free gift of salvation? If we already know Christ, will we choose to be done with serving self and go back to serving him? Um, and so just there's that element of making that choice, be done with the excuses of why it's not going to work or how it can't happen. Um, we serve a mighty God, folks, mighty God, who can do far beyond whatever it is that we could even perceive or come to think he can, he can do above that. And so I'm just encouraged by that. And just also that, you know, it says in Hebrew 3, 8, today, if you hear his voice, God's voice, right? If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as he did in the past. And so I didn't know Christ until I did. And when I came to know him, everything changed and just as it did for this man here where he chose to listen to God's voice and do what he said um, and so that's just an encouragement to me so then if we turn on well we have a card you all might have like electronic link um, we're going to turn the card and on the back it says a truly repentant person recognizes Jesus as Lord over every area of life that is why they can they can then believe Jesus will change their life the idea that God will bless an unrepentant believer is contrary to scripture and common sense. Uh, God is looking for people's who's, people whose hearts are completely his. Second Chronicle 16.9 says it this way, the eyes of the Lord move to and fro through the earth to strongly support the person whose heart is completely his. There is no way to be that person without daily repentance turning from our selfishness as we trust that Jesus can and will create in you a new way of life. And then just going on, we've got a couple of quotes, one from Spurgeon that says, when the, when the word of God changes a person, it takes away from them their despair, but it does not take from them their need to daily repent and believe God will keep changing them. And James Phillips says, Repentance is fundamentally a change of direction, a turning from your own self-will to God's will for you. I love that where it's, we're all about whatever we're going. We're going this way. This is the way I'm going. I'm living a life of destruction. I'm on the path of destruction. I am in addiction. I am losing everything. I'm going to keep going until I die because that's where I was going to end up truly, like physically dead. Um, and then repentant, repentance came where I cried out to the Lord, done with this path I'm turning a complete 180 to, to Christ and my life is now a totally different thing right so it's repentance for salvation repenting of my sins for the first time and then it's a daily thing because I'm this fleshy ball of a person who is going to make mistakes who's going to still sin and um, I need to have a daily repentance of those things it's no longer in the past I've screwed up. I'm going to keep going. Might as well until they catch me, whoever they are, whatever that means, right? Like in each of our own lives, it might be something different. It might be our spouse. It might be our kids catching us. It might be our employer. It might be DHS child welfare. It might be the parole and probation department, whatever that, whatever that looks like. And today we don't have to do that because we can take a short account of our sins. Holy Spirit helps us with that, folks. When we place our faith in Christ, indwelling of the Holy Spirit happens convicting us of when we are veering off of what God wants, God's best for our lives. Um, so then also it says here, would you like to know when you have been truly humbled by your sins? How you repent will tell you much. And then we've got one more scripture to cover if my husband like to read it. Sure, 1 John 1, 9 through 2, 3. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation, full payment for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, this whole idea of repentance is a daily thing. It is yeah. not just a one-time thing when we say yes to the free gift of salvation and we admit that we have you know, sinned, that we've screwed up, that we need Jesus, we need what he did on the cross so that we can have salvation, right? So that that reconciliation, that becoming, that being made right, right. for our unrighteousness, being made right with the Father once and for all, but this constant communion of, of changing, Lord, forgive me for, like, I shouldn't have flipped that person off as they cut me off, or I shouldn't have got angry, you know, and, and yelled at my wife, or yelled at one of the kids, or, you know, like, whatever that looks like, there, there's a constant, right? Because we, we need to be changing and running to the Lord. Like, if you want to change, run to the Lord. Ask God for forgiveness and to change you, because it says here that he forgives you of all of unrighteousness. Folks, the cool thing about confession of our sins to God is that cleansing, right? You think about like addiction and what that's like, that darkness, that always hiding, the nastiness, the feeling like in, in shame and guilt behind what it is that we're doing, right? But if we run to the Lord, it says that he, if we confess, there's a huge payoff, folks, folks, the A, forgiveness, right? But then there's this, this cleansing component, this washing, this renewing that takes place so that we no longer have to live in the darkness and the treachery of of what it is that we've done or are doing we can we can walk in this newness so there's great blessing Amen. for running to god who already knows he sees all things he knows all things so it's not like man lord i shouldn't have you know uh i, I shouldn't have done that that god's like oh my gosh my child i can't believe that you did it god already knows we're not going to rock his throne and, and shake him out of like, I don't know why you did that. I, I'm just so blown, so blown away by you, Joshua, right? Like that's not going to be the response. Instead, the word of God says that he cleanses us of all unrighteousness and everything that led up to it. That's good news. That is good news. And um, as far as that first John, I also see it says that if we confess our sins, so once, once more we have a choice, you know, if we're going to choose to confess those things. And again, don't forget, it reminded us all, we have the Holy Spirit helping us, convicting us. So it's not even me trying to figure out if I'm being sinful or not on my own. Like I have the Holy Spirit's help in that. Um, but then it says he, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins. So he's, it's his faithfulness. He's not going to say, oh, wait, Jesus Christ's death on the cross wasn't enough for that one, right? It says full payment. He himself is the propitiation, full payment for our sins so past sins present future sins christ paid the price once for all of those things and god is faithful to forgive us for that and so i'm so thankful for that and then verse 10 where it says if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and i love that that's an invitation you know we don't we're not called to be perfect right we are called to be following and repenting to the perfect one god the faithful perfect one um, and so I love that instead of trying to act like I have it all figured out and trying to act like everything's always okay, it, it's not, right? Not always. And I'm going to screw up. And, and the Lord like is inviting me in. It's going to be okay, Carly. Here I am. I am faithful. I will forgive you. As far as east is from the west, I have forgiven you already through Jesus Christ. But he's inviting us to come to him with that. Um, to ask for that forgiveness that's already there. So it's one of those things where you, you, you can't lose. And I'm so encouraged by that. And we do, you know, just talking about like this is this, all of this that we talked about with first John and um, in regards to repentance and, and out of John five, like this is all life or death, right? Like, like truly, um, even during our staff time, we were revisiting the fact that through the course of COVID, there's been a a couple of you know celebrations of life for folks that you know used to come here um and overdosed and, and lost their life you know we know that they know the lord and they're with him in heaven but like truly this is life and death when we talk about this and also we just want to revisit i think verse 14 out of john 5 where it does say 
Christ does say to the man he healed, see, you are well now, but stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. You know, and so in that, one, Christ hadn't gone to the cross yet. So for that man specifically, like the salvation of Jesus Christ, you know, death, burial, and resurrection hadn't yet occurred, life and death, right? And for those of us, if we've come to know the Lord, we've come, placed our faith in Christ, nothing takes us out of the Father's hand. Our salvation is secured forever. Eternity in heaven is going to happen. However, should we, in Christ, and guess what? This can happen. Um, in Christ, we can choose self, because we always have that choice, over him. And what happens when we choose? And what that means, like what we're choosing to sin instead of being obedient to the Lord we don't lose our salvation, um, but we most certainly can lose our joy and our peace. And there could be consequences, even in Christ, if we choose to go back to our old ways. Yeah, and for those of us, right, we're involved with the most excellent way because it's a Christ-centered addictions victory group, right? Mm -hmm. So addiction. Addiction brings what? Uh, all kinds of things. It, it brings, uh, whether it be actual physical death or death to relationships or right. like incarceration. So there's still natural consequences for the things that we do, right? Um, so we can, as believers, um, choose to walk away from the things that we know are true and know are good and to go like revisit the dump, the life that we lived prior to Christ and something worse could happen, right? God has rescued me, has rescued my wife so that we can, uh, be in service yeah. to him and in service to his people. And at any given moment, if we were to choose to do something outside of that there there's Feel who bad. knows who knows i i know what happens if i choose self over christ um uh, it is guaranteed another uh prison set of 15 years minimum or death there there is no alternative uh 15 years is what they tried to give me the last time so i know i know where the starting point is for that right um but then there's also you know that i, I would hurt so many people if I chose to go back to the old ways. So the the greatest thing that we can do is is run to the throne room of grace. Isn't that daily repentance? Daily repentance, yeah. right? And so, folks, as we wrap up tonight, um, a couple of things. Uh, feel free to, uh, because if we were to break down, if you were here and we were to break down into smaller tables, we would ask you a couple of questions. What is it that you are getting out of this tonight and how yeah. can we pray for you? And we would still love to know um, what it is that you got out of this tonight. And we would also still love to know what it is and how it is that we can be praying for you guys. Um, you can put it in here as a staff. You know, my wife and I are administrators. You know, Matt, Masera, and his wife, you know, have, have administration power. Uh, Pastor Matt and his wife, you know, please uh, let us know how we can pray. Yeah. Uh, we would love to pray for you. Um, if it is something personal and private, please private message us so that we could pray uh, because again although we say this is a safe group you know and what's said here stays here this is the internet this is not the safe thing that what's said here stays here component that we're right. talking about um, but we would we would really love to uh, know how we could pray um, you could be praying for us I myself and Matthew we leave to Mexico uh, on Wednesday uh, to go work with a very specific population of people um, and so we have a, uh, as far as Be Bold goes, it's just Matthew and I on this. We have a couple of other people going with us. So please be praying for our team for, for safety, um, on the way there, there, and on the way home, uh, as well as, you know, for, uh, please pray for my wife and kids, uh, pray for, uh, Matthew's wife and kids. Um, yeah, God is good. We're, we're trusting him um, but we definitely would uh, covet your guys's prayers um, yeah so we're thankful and I'll close this in prayer awesome have a great night guys and yeah we're gonna pray father we thank you uh, for those that are participating now that will participate later um, Lord we just thank you for your word being what changes and transforms it's that relationship with you uh, that changes everything Lord, may we, uh, even my wife and I, continue to fall more and more in love with your word, with you every day. Uh, may we continue to be those that say yes to you and no to self. May we continue to run to you in repentance and cry out, Abba, Father, please forgive us. Uh, help us 
cleanse us of all unrighteousness and everything that led up to it and and to help us to live for you yes. uh, god we thank you i pray for the folks uh, again lord just uh we pray that your blessing um in jesus wonderful name amen we love you guys have a great night yes